Mucheme Zambuya is the name of this tree. It means it makes your grandmother cry. How it makes your grandmother cry is something I will leave to your imagination, but suffice to say, it is very closely related to this tree's well-known aphrodisiac properties. How's it guys? I'm Gus, the African plant hunter. This is the next episode in my ongoing series on medicinal plants of Southern Africa. And this is Pittosporum viridiflorum cheesewood Muchema uh, Zambuya, also known as Muramba China in Shona and in Indivele, we call it Iyoyi. Pittosporum, because the seeds of this, bright red seeds, when uh, the outer case, which is green, opens up, uh, the actual seeds are covered in a kind of sticky resin. And uh, pitto means sticky resinous, and sporum means seed. Viridiflorum, by the way, is a reference to the green flowers um, that it has, uh, small, quite pretty flowers. And this tree is very, very widespread in Southern Africa. It's able to grow in a lot of different environments. Interestingly, the only one in its genus in Southern Africa, but there are a couple of hundred other uh, in the same genus, Pittosporums, that are found mostly in Asia, Australasia, uh, this is the only one in Southern Africa. So this plant, wherever it grows, is well known medicinally. I've already mentioned its primary traditional use, which is using the bark or the root bark as an aphrodisiac powdered in an infusion or a decoction. A funny story there, in Great Zimbabwe, there's one of these trees up on the top of the hill complex. And a few years ago, there was a tour guide who uh, used to tell tourists that uh, this tree and the bark from it was the reason that the kings of Great Zimbabwe were able to maintain up to 200 wives and keep them all happy. Uh, that story got printed in the newspaper a few years ago and it, and it led to a bit of a rush on that tree. Um, tourists were going specifically to Great Zimbabwe to get some bark from that tree rather than actually to enjoy uh, this beautiful cultural site. And it is quite common to see this tree in the bush that has been harvested. Um, the bark has been harvested. The bark you can see uh, is very distinctive with the lenticels on it. It's um, quite different from most of the other trees around here, so you won't mistake it. The other traditional medicinal uses are all almost entirely related to the bark um, or the root bark. It's often used as an infusion used for chest complaints, for back pain. In Swaziland, they take the powder bark, they apply it topically to the tooth uh, for toothache. It's also used in veterinary medicine, where it's well known as a treatment for black gall and also for uh, red water diseases. In South Africa, uh, they do use the leaves of this. They consume it as a tea to treat uh, gastric ulcers. Uh, and another quite common use is as an enema uh, to treat dizziness. One final sort of magical use that's uh, that quite common in Zimbabwe is you consume when you want to uh, rebuild a friendship with someone who used to be your friend but you've uh, lost touch with them. Uh, you think of them whilst you're drinking a decoction of the bark and, and your friendship will resume. Now, what about pharmacologically? Well, this is one of those trees where a lot of the pharmacology actually uh, reflects the traditional uses. So there's a really interesting group of uh, compounds called saponins that are found in this um, particular type of saponin called BATs, which are well known for their uh, anti-cancer and um, anti-Alzheimer's uh, impact. The particular saponin in here that's been identified that's pretty much unique is called a pitoviridicide. Now, this plant has been tested for its antimicrobial use and found to be very effective, particularly against uh, antifungal, actually, against Candida albicums. It's also been tested for its anti-malarial activity. Uh, this plant is actually almost as effective as the gold standard for malaria, which is the Artemisia. A uh, very similar mode of activity. It has been tested for anti-diarrheal activity. It appears that some of the compounds in this have the same as sort of emodium, same action of paralyzing the gut. 
and it has been tested for anti-cancer activity. Actually, it's not the bark that's been tested for the anti-cancer, but the leaves. So an essential oil from the leaves contain a compound called beta-alamine, and beta-alamine is well known uh, in cancer treatments. Uh, you mix it in with a cocktail of drugs and it enhances the efficacy of those other drugs and reduces the negative side effects. Uh, so that is uh, quite an interesting use. It's also been tested and found to be effective against the influenza virus, or influenza A virus, and it has been found to be effective against various tick-borne diseases, uh, which is something that's quite topical for us in here. So altogether, this plant, although it may look fairly unremarkable, it grows really easily, by the way. It's a lovely ornamental plant in the garden. Um, doesn't have particularly spectacular flowering, but it does have a lot of medicinal uses, as I've just told you. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have plenty more on my YouTube and Facebook, Instagram, and even LinkedIn, just type in African Plant Hunter, you'll find me there. If you would like to support me and help me to make more videos, you can do that by going to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash African Plant Hunter. Small pledge will help me to make more videos. All right, guys, I'm off to go and look at some other medicinal plants in Southern Africa. I will catch you later. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.